Welcome, beautiful goddesses, to Teach Travel Talk. I am Megan, and my mission, goal, and vision is to help guide you through the crazy journey of life and of being a human and having this human experience. Because until we realize that we are the creators of our reality, we can either make life very difficult for ourselves or we can make our world incredible but it's all about how we perceive our world and the world around us so this is for you yes you the one listening so that I can uplift and empower you to look within yourself and find that inner light love guidance and intuition that will lead you to unbecome who the world told you to be and bring you back to who you were meant to be and who you were supposed to become in this life. So let's dive deep into conversations that will bring you teachable moments to implement throughout your daily life and to help reprogram the way we think. Hello my beautiful goddesses, queens, and unicorns. And welcome or welcome back to Teach Travel Talk, where we are teaching one another how to travel through this human experience by sharing and talking about our stories. It is so important for us to hear what other people are going through and talking about what we have gone through in this life. They are such powerful tools that we don't tap into enough because when we are releasing and transforming that pent up energy in our body into a new form, we release it and we gain our control back. And today, I get to have, you get to see an amazing talk between two life coaches, me and Yana, who has been on many times before, and she's someone that inspires me, and I love having conversations with, and I'm so grateful that we have connected and been able to share a lot with one another and share our stories and to really come together and help others to navigate life and I absolutely love in here because Yana is a very powerful person and I felt that I was being interviewed but I loved it I love that you know you get two different perspectives from two different life coaches who have done the work themselves of learning how to not only heal ourselves, how we have healed ourselves by being aware of our cycles in life and learning how to be and learning that one of the greatest tools that we could ever have is our acceptance of talking to ourselves in many different forms and finding that form that allows you to release and transmute that energy out of you instead of suppressing it and holding on to it for the rest of your life because it wasn't meant to hold on it was supposed to be a passing feeling and emotion that we have allowed our body to hold on to it and for it to take up roots in us and it's about finding all of the roots that are in our body grabbing them and taking them out so I can't wait for you to hear this incredible talk 
And I hope that you have some amazing teachable moments because I know that whenever I speak with Yana, I learn so much from her and I love her wisdom. I love the words that she speaks and I hope you do too. So without further ado, me and Yana on helping us and giving you a little life coach lesson. So, let's begin. The moon controls the water. How do we not think that it doesn't control us? We are water. We are made of water. How do you, you know, it's just like, it's crazy to me. Like, it doesn't make sense how it can control that, but not like we, again, think we're like better that we're, it doesn't affect. We were made of the same stuff. <sighs> like the same yeah. stardust. Mm-hmm. we're all made out of the same thing all living creatures if um if we pay attention to nature it has its own cycle the 24 hour cycle uh, the seasonal cycles the moon cycles right the the months uh, the 12 month cycles the week cycles and like you said it would be kind of naive of us to think that we are not part of that nature. Yeah. We are very, very much so. Yeah. And, and that is why I agree that it is very important to understand our human design. We are the, the only creatures on this planet that can take time and become something more than we were born to be. We we're born to be a baby and a human, but we can become something more than just a human. We can become a doctor, right? We can become a healer. We can become, we can't really become a tree or a dog, but we can become one with nature, right? So we can become anything or anyone we want. And in order for us to become successful in that journey of growth towards what we want most, it's important to understand ourselves, right? Like we for example, we don't all learn the, uh, but what I was saying is that like, for example, we all learn a different way. Mm-hmm. And it's important to understand how each and every one of us learns, right? And I feel like not even just learn, but how we do things, right? So in business, all of us are trying to find like that person and, oh, you're going to make me successful. Well, everyone finds success differently. You know, even if, you know, you laid out a whole plan for me to follow in your footsteps, it might not work for me. It might not be the way that I need to. So sometimes when I feel we have like conversations, oh, I did this wrong. So you need to do it this way. But what if that wrong was someone's right way of doing it? Right. So when we're constantly seeking outside of ourselves, I feel like both me and you were constantly wanting knowledge and even more wisdom on how to build or how to do this, not realizing that we have that wisdom inside of us. We know it already intuitively. I feel sometimes we fear the outcome, you know, or just have those fears that stop us from blooming and evolving and just being like nature, going through the seasons, going through the cycle and just enjoying every single cycle that we have in life. For me, it it mostly comes from a place of not feeling that I am enough, that I know enough, that I give enough, that I do enough, that I offer enough, um, which, you know, and that is one of the reasons why I might find myself um, experiencing overwhelm and anxiety like I have been for the past two days because before we hopped on here you were asking why why I'm ex- experiencing anxiety and that's because I have this expectation of myself of always doing and doing and doing 
And I have times when I forget that it is extremely important to just be and not do, and that I need days to not do anything because I need those days of rest. And I can't always, I, I can't pick and choose those days. I can't schedule those days because um, there's something beyond me. Yeah controls it and I'm not fully aware of it and the way that I'm aware of it is just keeping track of my own cycles of that energy and how it works and I know we've talked about the, the menstrual period for women for me the first week I'm great I like after, like during the period but the second week quite often is when I find myself mm-hmm. having two or three days where I really just I don't want to I can't, I'm not in the mood, I'm too tired, I'm exhausted, not right now, I will deal with it later. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. So this is where I've been finding myself and and mentally kind of like trying to pressure myself to actually do something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then fairly quickly I realize and remember that if I push myself, it's only going to do more damage, right? And I don't want to break myself. So I allow myself the time to just be and sit still and, I mean, quite literally sit here and watch the candle slowly burn out. <laughs> That's okay. And then when I... it's burning out, I put it on the, the, the cup warmer that actually melts everything and yeah, I, sit nice. and I watch it melt. Hey, and... You know, I feel we take even those little things for granted and it's teaching us to find that stillness and appreciate this moment and having that anchor, whatever it may be, you know, and it can just go sit outside and stare at the sky, stare at the tree, stare at nature. It will teach you kind of how to be, (laughs) just like you said, it teaches you to be. Just be there, be in this moment with all of your senses, all of them. And I feel we have a hard time doing that is embodying the moment completely because our mind might be there, but then it's like, okay, but are, are, your, for long. are your, huh? The mind is not there for long when we're being in the moment oh, yeah. we're not there for very long. Yeah. And that's where mindfulness practice comes in. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know from my own experience or from conversations is that being in the moment and just being and not doing anything is one of the hardest things people can do. Some, the way they describe it can be summarized in one word, torture. They feel like it's torture. And just to think about how is it that we human beings, we used to just be, that's why we're called human beings, not human doings. Mm -hmm. And then at some point we got reprogrammed to doing and doing and doing and doing. And then on top of it, you get a job, nine to five, where you got to, work, 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 work for a little bit of money as a reward that you didn't even decide on how much you were going to get paid. So how would you, how would you respond to someone who had just told you that being in the moment and being and just sitting down and looking at trees or outside and not doing anything to them that it feels like torture. How would you respond to that? Ooh, say, well, you know, when we are being, it brings us to those uncomfortable moments, right? And of course, right now it feels like torture because you have constantly been on the go for so long that you don't know how else to be and but uncomfortable uncomfortableness 
is where change happens. And unless we can sit with it, observe it, understand it, can we move through it? So sit with that uncomfortableness or that, tell me why, why is it unbearable for you to sit here? Is it because your mind is racing to all the things that you need to get done? Is it going back to the past, to all the traumas? Where is your mind wandering to? Because that is actually what is making you go crazy inside. It's not that you actually sitting and being, it's that you don't know how to sit and be. And it's going to take you to all these different places. And then you're really still not being there. You're going to all these other maybe bad places and it's making you feel that way practice Mm -hmm. right practicing questioning your thoughts and monitoring Mm -hmm. your thoughts as to where they're going Mm -hmm. um in the past or in the future Mm -hmm. if it was in the moment you would not be experiencing that Exactly. Yeah. And even that it's like, okay, are you more uncomfortable because your parents at a young age made you go to the corner and sit there if you were in trouble? So you correlate that to being in trouble. Mm -hmm. There are so many triggers that we don't even know we have, but by being able to, to meditate, to just sit with yourself and talk to yourself and figure out what what is going on in there? What can I help you with today? You know, because again, we're constantly going to go through it. I constantly go through it. I know you probably go through it all the time, right? Like we all do. We're human. That's a part of being human, but it's practicing. Like you said, just keep practicing and you get better. It becomes a habit over time. Just like all these habits that we automatically do. It's autopilot. And when you get to this point of practicing over and over and over again, then you're able to really get into being and being in the moment and being present and finding the joy within everything that we're doing. Another thing I also have heard many people say and ask me is not knowing how to talk to themselves. Mm-hmm. which I mean the first time I was asked I mean how do you talk to yourself I didn't think that it was just me I, like I thought it was just me I didn't know that it was pretty much everyone mm-hmm. that have a thought in their mind and they have and and it's almost like they ignore it they avoid it and they don't know how to talk to themselves because that thought is just a thought Mm -hmm. where in reality that thought is a conversation that your inner self is trying to have with you and if it is ignored Mm -hmm. no matter how old this thought is Mm -hmm. it will not like it Mm -hmm. it won't like it so <laughs> it can get worse and it usually does so I wanted to ask you mm-hmm. how would you respond to someone where if they told you mm-hmm. that they don't know how to talk to themselves and I can't I can't talk to myself I'm crazy that like, crazy people do that Well, first of all, I would say get rid of your belief that you can't because you can. You're just making the choice not to because we're afraid of what that inner voice is going to tell us and that fear will stop us and kind of re-transforming our thoughts to a loving place, right? Like, let me love and treat this like a child right let me listen to you let me hear you out and it is hard for especially people to talk to themselves and I say transform it in another way journal write down those thoughts that are in your head and start to see the patterns of those thoughts and you know then we 
can go back to those thoughts and say, hey, where are these thoughts coming from? Are they true? Are they coming from somebody else telling me I should believe this? And then, you know, because you you can't just jump into something, especially when you're really uncomfortable and like, no, I'm never going to get there. Well, take baby steps, take baby steps, do one thing to help you start writing. Journaling is a key to self-help, man. It is an amazing tool. We should all be journaling. It is not just for little kids and their diaries. No, every human should have a journal and write down, write down your experiences, write down what you're thinking that day, what you're grateful for make it what you want it to be. I can say how I started out journaling, but everyone's going to do use it differently. And then once you break through that and get comfortable with having that conversation on paper with yourself, then you can start to have that conversation verbally with yourself. The biggest thing that we're going to finally get to is looking ourselves in the mirror and talking to ourselves. That is the most powerful tool I have taught anyone to do is to look yourself in the eyes. How many people can do it? Not a lot. Not a lot about, yeah, like (laughs) I love doing it. It is like my daily thing when I'm brushing my teeth, when I'm combing my hair, anytime I'm in front of a mirror, I talk to myself. When I first started this, I had mirrors placed strategically all around my house. There was not Anywhere you could walk in my house that you would not see yourself in the mirror. And I loved that because it, first of all, it made me love my own company, right? Oh, if I needed someone, hey, I'm right there. (laughs) Oh, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. And it was nice because I got to see myself and not just, again, see myself from my eyes, but now I could kind of start having these different perspectives and seeing me in different angles and it opened my mind to really start living outside of myself and perceiving things in that way instead of um being I guess um I don't want to say the observer but we are an observer um but being a different kind of an observer outside of myself And it got me so in touch with myself by talking and speaking it out. And it's hard at first. It really is because you have to get uncomfortable with yourself. It's not easy to look yourself in the eye and say, hey, Megan, I forgive you for everything that has happened. I'm so sorry that we got into this situation or that this happened or it's uncomfortable. It's not nice, but We need that uncomfortableness to break through and do something different and to release it. I don't think we realize how powerful talking about something is. It releases its power on you. When you hold it inside, it's it's gripping onto everything that it can and it's holding you hostage. But by even writing it, talking it out, you're giving it less and less power the more you talk about it. And that's why even for me, I talk about all my traumas. I talk about the those things that made me very uncomfortable, made me super uncomfortable. But guess what? They don't make me uncomfortable anymore. They don't. They don't get any reaction from me. They don't bring back any fear or any hate or any negative emotion anymore. I just let that moment be that moment in the past and it's never going to happen again. I've learned from them. I've sat with them. I've held them. I've loved them. Even the very horrible things that have happened. And I say, it's okay. This is what was my plan or else I wouldn't be Megan. I want to be here right now talking to you, Yana, and having this amazing experience and having this connection with you, right? So it's being grateful for being able to do this, but I did it by helping myself, by stopping myself from saying, nope, I can never do that. I can never do that. I can never do that. Stop saying it and do it because you never know until you try. And that's the biggest thing is trying, try to help yourself because no one else can help you, but you. 
I remember this quote that I said, I, I don't know where I got it from. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I think it was just me that said it. And it goes something like this. Never say never. Because the moment you say never, that is exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So when I say never, I say it knowing that this is exactly what's going to happen. Um, and I say it in the positive way, the word never. Mm -hmm. And I, what I hear you say is that growth is not comfortable. And there was this phrase that was replaying in my mind. Um, growth is comfortable, said no one who actually grew in their lifetime, right? So the people that say growth can be comfortable and when you, you can grow through something and it will be okay, yes, it will be okay, but and you won't feel discomfort and you'll feel comfortable, then it's not growth, then you're just playing it. And yeah. it, it's, like a, it's like a habit. If you're trying to change your habits, yeah. it's going to feel uncomfortable until yeah. it becomes a new habit and yeah. then you will feel comfortable. So comfort yeah. lays on the, and waits for you on the other side of discomfort once you embrace mm -hmm. it and work yeah. through it and grow through it, which does not happen on its own. Like mm -hmm. there is always some kind of action that needs to be taken. Even if you're sitting there and doing nothing, as many would say, um, and just looking outside or watching that candle burn ever so slowly. And it's like, oh my God, it's been two hours and I've been staring at you. Um, that's not doing nothing. <laughs> you laugh yes I, that's what I did actually <laughs> that's okay <laughs> that's a lot because what happens is there's a lot of thoughts that go through and I've gotten quite good at talking to myself mm -hmm. in my head mm -hmm. and and I've learned how to do that. And I love mirror talk. One of the favorite things that I do in the mirror, and I don't really need to do very much through the mirror, um, is really just look at myself and tell myself, say to myself, I am lovable. Which the first time, like, I couldn't, I, um, it was like one of those funny things that I didn't think it was funny until I kind of replayed it in my head. I was acting like a child. So I have a really big mirror, um, <laughs> a lot bigger than me. It's like six feet tall and I'm five one um, in, in the foyer. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, once I learned of that phrase, I am lovable, I, I was so brave. I'm like, I'm going to go and tell myself to the mirror. And as I'm walking in to the foyer, I see the mirror and I go like this to the side and I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. So I started with just saying it in my head as I slowly moved to the mirror mm -hmm. and I was crying. So by the time I got to the mirror and I saw myself, the thoughts in my head were racing of, you're an ugly crier you cry ugly, <laughs> right? I'm like, no, I am beautiful. And I'm a beautiful crier because this is what healing looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, this is what healing looks like. So mm -hmm. from, from there, I was able to say to myself in the mirror, I am lovable. Now, when I work with people and they, and they tell me that they, they, ha they can't have that conversation with them, um, as I coach them through it, the common thing that they all come to is got to start small baby steps. Mm -hmm. And for pretty much everyone, the small step was starting a, a conversation like you would with anybody else. Just mm -hmm. saying hi to that voice. When the voice comes up, they would just say hi. Sometimes it's silent. Sometimes there's a response. Mm -hmm. And then you can follow the conversation. And some people do it on paper. 
right? Just saying high end paper and they know they're really talking to themselves on paper and just like, I can feel like my chest, <laughs> my chest burning now because quite a few people have done that. Um, and I myself have done that as well once. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love having one-on-one -on -one clients is because I get to learn from them. I'm like, oh my God, I never thought of that. So I too have had conversation with myself after having had conversations in my head in front of a mirror and it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. So starting small, whatever that looks like yeah. to those who are listening or watching, depending what platform you find um, this podcast on. And I would be curious to hear what is your small step on how you can start the conversation with yourself. Yeah. So we can learn from you as well. No, I, I love that you said that, you know, crying is a form of, you know, change. And it's a and I think a lot of people that too, especially in the society, we say, you can't cry. Hold it in, suck it up don't cry, you know, be, be a big boy, be a big girl, cry, mm -hmm. cry, in, crying is also a huge form. And people that I've worked with to do this, the first thing that they do is cry mm -hmm. and that's okay. It's a big release to be like, I'm sorry. I haven't talked to you sooner. Right. It's like reconnecting with this old friend that has been there forever, but you have been so disconnected from them and you, ha you live in the same house, but you've never said hi. So it's doing that again. And it's uncomfortable. And just like you said, baby steps, I start with just making eye contact, making eye contact with yourself in the mirror. Ridiculous. Go and see if you actually ever make true eye contact with yourself. And for me, what I try to get people to do is Okay, say some nice things about yourself. We always have that, you know, self-negative talk. I don't want to hear any, you know, oh, I don't like my nose. Oh, I don't like this. No, tell me what you do like. And eventually, you know, when you do this after a long period of time, you're going to go through your whole entire body and just be like, I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. And you love everything. Mm -hmm. But it takes time because we, again, we in society have this what perfect looks like and none of us can ever attain that we are all very uniquely different and that's awesome but own it own your authentic beautiful body this human suit that we have here enjoy it but embrace it and by embracing it that means talking to it right because this isn't just about mental health as well and, you know, getting us on that great path, but it's also learning these other tools about your health, right? Like what food is not agreeing with your body? And when you become in tuned with talking to yourself, you then pick up on all those signs that something is going on in your body and it's because of something else it can be a cream that you're using and it's affecting something so when we tap into this source to this power into the just talking to ourselves how crazy is like that we don't talk to ourselves and like you said yes most people think oh this person's crazy if they talk to your, themselves I'll take it. I am crazy, but guess what? I am a happy, crazy person, man. I, I'm living my best life being this crazy ass person and I'm okay with it. I'm totally okay with it. I love it. I embrace it. I enjoy it, but I'm so happy because of it. I'm so happy that I faced my fears. I faced that doubt in my head that I can never do this and I did it anyways because I didn't want to keep self-sabotaging myself and that's what happens when we're telling ourselves that we can never do this or never get to this well you're sabotaging yourself and stop sabotaging yourself start believing that you are capable that you are lovable and that you can do all of this I did love that you started with like, oh, I say this to myself. Mine is like a whole script, man. Like it's a movie. I sit there, 
like you with the candle, I will sit there for hours talking to myself, but not even just talking to myself in the mirror. I dance in front of the mirror. I do all these different things. I tell myself stories in the mirror when I'm really bored, because why not? <laughs> I talk to myself more on camera and the look at myself, like see right now, I can look at myself in, in the eyes and I can have a conversation with myself. <laughs> Uh, I do dance in front of a mirror. Um, that's honestly, that's the way I love to dance. I remember back in Russia, I, I used to go to dance class, dance school. Mm -hmm. And there would be really like mirrors from floor to ceiling. And it would be like across the whole entire wall. And I remember just loving seeing myself in the mirror dance. And what I really heard you say is finding a way how to reconnect with ourselves mm -hmm. because as children, we were connected. We knew who we were. We were comfortable with ourselves. We did not pick, we did not see any flaws in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We didn't, no child does mm -hmm. unless they've been told what their flaws are and pointed out. And it, and it breaks my heart that pretty much all children go through that yeah. um, and that is an unconscious program that the parent is running so it's it's at no fault of the parent mm -hmm. and I wanted to make that very clear to those parents that are listening it is at no fault of your own if you have said hurtful things to your children and given them a label or limited them in some kind of a way because you are hearing this message now to turn it around because all is not lost you have gone through the experience so it was normal to you mm -hmm. and now you're learning that there is another way that there's another choice that there's another option and that is exactly what makes a great parent doing something different and trying and keep going keep going keep going keep going and bettering yourself and your family at the same time. So it's important to take this time to reconnect with, you, with yourself in the ways that you know how. And when, when, when we were having this conversation and I was just listening to you, Megan, uh, talk about you know, having that conversation with, with, your, with your inner self, with your voice, um, the reason why I feel like it's so uncomfortable for everyone is this. Have you ever had, which is more like, I guess, a rhetorical question, because I know everybody has had this experience, where you want to have a conversation with someone or you want to say something to someone and you wait and you wait and you wait and the longer you wait, the harder it gets. So it's mm -hmm. pretty much the same way when you have these thoughts in your mind and you keep ignoring and ignoring and ignoring because you're afraid to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then one day you're brave enough to have the conversation and you have it. And then all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> oh, that feels great. And then doing it the second time can also feel uncomfortable and the third time. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. So that's kind of like a conversation with a with a friend who you lost contact with who keeps trying to reach out to you and have a conversation with you but you keep ignoring them and you keep holding back for a variety of reasons that is up to you to figure out what those reasons are and the way that it's going to happen is through conversation mm -hmm. right through facing that voice and having that one-on-one -on -one conversation however you want to do it on paper on audio recorder on your phone um video recorder maybe you want to type it up on here maybe you're more techie and digital um maybe it's the mirror maybe you want to go sit in nature and just talk to a tree um or to you know share that what that voice is saying to a tree maybe you can you know have a conversation between three of you mm -hmm. do the water talk to a candle i mean 
these are just a few options of many. Mm-hmm. And I'd be curious to find out what everybody else suggested or came up with of how, how, what would their first mini step be in having that conversation with that inner self? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I would love to hear that because every again, everyone is going to do it a little bit differently. Maybe they'll someone will hear what you said and pick up on that and hear what I said and resonate with that. We're all just here to, you know, I really believe we are all teachers to one another. We are all um, helping each other. And it's not that we're supposed to mimic someone else or do exactly what someone else is doing. We have to have that inner conversation to figure out what is best for us and what we need in our life instead of constantly, again, externalizing everything and thinking, it's outside of us because it's in here, Mm -hmm. but you gotta, you gotta talk to it. You gotta acknowledge it. You have to let it come out and be heard. And I think, you know, that's a really big problem is our inner child, you know, was always taught to sit down, shut up, not talk. And unfortunately we do that to ourselves. We tell ourselves that all the time. We tell ourselves to sit down, shut up, don't speak up, don't talk to me. And that's not okay. You, And that's why a lot of us have, you know, a lot of um, issues with our inner child because we're not allowing our inner child to be free and to express itself. Our inner child never goes away. We just suppress it and we need to honor our inner child. And our inner child is just getting us to go back to remembering how to live our lives, how to relax, how to enjoy, how to talk to ourselves. How I know probably most of us talk to ourselves when we were younger. All of us did it, right? So it's going back to those basics, going back to remembering what it was like before society told you who you should be, before society told you how you should be, and everything in your life and dictating all of it. And it's stepping back and saying, no, I'm going to, I'm going to free my child within. I'm going to go color. I'm going to go play in the grass. I'm going to go take a run, go ride my bike, play on the playground. Anytime I see a playground, guess who's on it? Me. (laughs) Cause it's joyful. It's fun. (laughs) Why not have fun in your life? (laughs) Yeah, I deny yourself it. Just don't deny yourself and help yourself. And don't stop your children from doing that. Like one of the things that I I see and hear quite often is parents preventing science experiments in children. Mm-hmm. Um, especially outside and inside the house as well. But you don't hear the ones uh, inside the house because people don't typically talk about things like that because they don't see it as a problem. And what do I mean by a science experiment? Honestly, the list is so endless um, that I I can only just begin to share what the science experiments are. Mm -hmm. So a science experiment, experiment is jumping in the puddle, jumping in in the little river or creek or jumping in the mud or rolling in the mud or rolling on the grass um, or trying to climb a tree or breaking a branch. These are just a few things outside, inside the house. Taking that egg out of the egg carton and just tossing it up in the air and seeing what happens. I mean, I say it because it happened in my house quite a few times. My son even took an egg <laughs> to his bedroom, <laughs> hoping the chicken will come out of it. No chicken came out. Um, but I've I've done those things myself as well, where I took an egg and I, you know, I tried to put under the light and take care of it and everything. No chicken came out. Um, mixing a whole bunch of foods together, and and uplek is one of his favorite things to do um and it's cornstarch and water 
And quite often we stop these ty types of science experiments because we don't want to clean up the mess. We, there, there's, there's some kind of fear attached to it, which comes from our own childhood because we weren't allowed to do it. We gotten in trouble over, um, over trying to, you know, break an egg and it would make a mess. We try to stop these science experiments. Where I was going with, you know, denying your child an opportunity to do an experiment um, and punishing, because quite often a punishment follows that. And how you pun how you were punished as a child. So when you mentioned that, you know, you were put in the corner and you sit there quietly and still and don't talk to anyone because nobody wants to hear it. That's how I was punished. So then how does that translate into adulthood? I find myself when I feel like I did something wrong, I find myself sitting quietly in this virtual corner and not expressing the turmoil that is going within me, that is happening within me. And there's another perfect example uh, from a show I watched. I shared this video, I believe it was my Instagram stories, oh, I, two, maybe three months ago. And it was this, uh, it was this comedian who, who is going through, through professional help. He's seeking professional help. And he's learned through this person that he's working with that he continues to punish himself when he would go and do this uh, stand-up comedy and he felt like he failed, he would go back in the car, take a bottle and hit himself with that bottle until he bleeds. Because that is how he was punished as a child. His dad used to beat, beat him and hurt, um, hurt him until he was visibly in pain or would bleed. So he would continue that cycle. Now, as an adult and he wasn't conscious of it until he came to this realization through professional help and that's why that's one of the reasons that i always suggest to everyone to seek professional help there's so many different types of help that you can hire that you can get to help you work through things because somebody outside of you sees you for who you are and they see you as a powerful strong credible empower empowering wise person who knows everything who's been through stuff and they're able to help you to connect the dots and help you come to such realizations as that because that is not something that very like very very few i actually don't know anyone who has not gone through either training or getting professional help who's been able to um, also, when I, when I say like training, I also mean like educating yourself online. That's a lot of training, right? Um, <clears throat> who's been able to connect the dots themselves for the things that are happening on the inside. And an outsider, and I, I have coaches that I work with that have been, that have helped me to connect the dots where where I couldn't yeah no and that's hard because just like our inner child we weren't able to ask for help when we were younger we weren't as able to ask our parents how do I get through this emotion how do I do this you know it was just constantly a uh, don't do that don't do this don't and no explanation behind it no nothing you're just supposed to comply with what is and so now we all have this hard time not only asking for help but accepting help and we all need it we all truly truly need it and that's okay that's what we are here for we're here to find community and 
hold one another accountable for being the best versions of ourselves. And you can only do that by having other people and asking for help and sharing and talking about whatever it is that is going on inside of you so that, again, you can release it in many different ways. And just like going back to our first like topic here is learning about yourself. Maybe go find out your human design, go find out all this different stuff about you. So then you're not stuck. You realize maybe why something isn't working out the way you need to, or how to ask for help, right? What your kind of type needs or who you gravitate towards and all of this different stuff. We have to become the parents we needed when we were younger and be that, embody that, embody who would I, who would I want to be talking to me right now? How would I want this person to talk to me if I was five and didn't, was just having fun and didn't realize that this was something bad? How would you explain this? How would you want someone to explain it to you? And I think always going back to that is help yourself. Just like you said, get, get some help. It's okay. It is a okay to need help. We all need help. We all need help. We can't do it all by ourselves. Yeah. And it does not make you weak. I yeah. will say that again. Asking for help does not make you weak. I learned that the hard way. Mm-hmm. I learned it the hard way. Um, where, I mean, after my son was born, only having six hours of sleep in about two weeks did a number on me and I still did not ask for help. And if I did early on, I probably would have avoided going through severe and massive, massive depression where I was medicated and was no longer myself. And One thing I will add to what you were saying, Megan, is when we are children, um, I get a sense that it would be quite a few children that have gone through this. Now as adults might be becoming aware of it. Our curiosity was quite often suppressed or ignored. So how does curiosity show up? Curiosity shows up through questions that children ask that come from a place of wanting to know more. Many ways of how they ask you, tell me more, tell me more, such as why, how, where, why not? Right. Um, There are so many different ways of how a child will express their curiosity and Quite often, parents might f- might see those questions as why, as um, how do I put it, is when you're listening to me and you are being rude by asking mm-hmm. questions, but they're not. Like they are so new to this planet, to this world, that they have no idea about anything. So they are very curious and they just want to know why. And if it's suppressed and ignored year after year after year after year, which is another form of how a child asks for help, help me, I want to know more. And if you don't help your child, like you you weren't helped when you were little, then it might be hard for you to go out there and ask other people for help come help me i'm lost i'm hurting i'm confused i don't know what's happening i need help thank you thank you thank you uh, for sharing yourself and your wisdom and until we meet again <laughs> of course all right bye okay, bye thanks wow i took away so much from this episode and so much from this conversation and really learning about ourselves and learning about how to overcome those obstacles 
that come in our way and stop us from allowing ourselves to express emotions and feelings and what we're going through in life and being able to talk yourself through these choices and decisions and learning how to overcome them and just be be in the moment be in that experience be in that feeling or that emotion and learning what it is trying to teach you at that given time instead of resisting it and instead of suppressing it but letting it show itself and allowing yourself to move with it and transform it into another way emotions aren't supposed to stay for very long they're there to come to teach us and to go but many of us haven't learned how to let that go especially as a child and it's going back to those child moments and rewriting how we show up in this world and how we are going to create a new method and a new form of releasing and letting go and not allowing emotions and feelings to control us in our everyday life. So I really hope you took away some teachable moments and there were amazing information here that I hope can help any of you who are going through this spiritual journey of becoming your authentic self and learning to love yourself and I hope that you can take some of these tools and apply them in your life because I promise they will help so much So until next time, my beautiful goddesses, queens, and unicorns, have some magical moments. And I can't wait for next Tuesday's episode. And don't forget to come and join the tribe at facebook.com slash teach travel talk tribe. We can't wait for you to come and join that tribe. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Namaste.